This is Cyberpunk 2077 in its path-traced RT overdrive mode, outputting at 4K resolution using the new DLSS 4 technology from NVIDIA, running on a GeForce RTX 5080 based on the new Blackwell architecture. This is one of the most demanding graphics workloads in gaming, but it's running at a higher frame rate than any prior GeForce card, owing to the new multi-frame generation technology announced at CES 2025. And not only that, but image quality is looking substantially improved, as for the first time since the launch of DLSS 2 in 2020, NVIDIA has moved on to an all-new machine learning model that's applied to both super resolution and ray reconstruction. So the potential to see big quality improvements to both is potentially highly exciting, and that's going to be paired with smoother frame rates via the higher frame generation factors. There's a lot to discuss here then, but to be clear, this is preview first look coverage. The RTX 5080 I had access to is an engineering sample. The drivers are not final. All of the capture and data you'll see today was acquired in just a five and a half hour time window. Not enough for deep dive analysis or review, but enlightening nonetheless. So we're going to be looking at the new super resolution, ray reconstruction and multi-frame generation upgrades in much more depth in future. But for now, I've seen enough and captured enough to have an initial response to the new technologies. So we'll have some thoughts on the improvements to super resolution and ray reconstruction and some early frame rate testing to see the impact of the new frame generation options. Nothing's final here though, so there'll be no FPS numbers until review time, but you'll get to see percentage uplifts from the new 3X and 4X frame gen setups, and a snapshot of how 50 series frame gen stacks up against the existing 2X rendition on 40 series running on the RTX 4080 Super. First up, a word on the B-roll you'll see throughout this video. Just like DLSS 3 before it, being able to show you how DLSS 4 works on YouTube is kind of tricky, right? And that's because current capture card technology is limited to capturing 4K resolution at 120 frames per second. And even then we need to run it at 50% speed as YouTube itself as a platform tops out at 4K 60 frames per second. Problem is, running unlocked, frame rates from the RTX 5080 are actually much higher than the 120 frames per second the capture card can grab. So while this video gives you an idea of how the new frame generation system presents, the real world experience is something quite different. Frame persistence is significantly lower and therefore visible artifacts are far less noticeable. In effect, we need to hold back DLSS 4 to give any kind of representative media on a video platform. DLSS 4 with full multi-frame gen enabled is designed for the latest generation of high refresh rate displays, including the 4K 240Hz QD OLED displays we highly recommend. So let's kick off first by talking about super resolution and ray reconstruction. The existing DLSS uses a convolutional neural network. NVIDIA says this generates new pixels by analyzing localized context and tracking changes in those regions over successive frames. The model has improved over time, as we've reported, but it can only go so far, and the latest releases have shown only iterative improvements. The new DLSS model uses a vision transformer, similar to the kind of architecture powering AI models like ChatGPT, Gemini, and Flux, which NVIDIA says enables self-attention operations to evaluate the relative importance of each pixel across the entire frame, and indeed over multiple frames. There are twice as many parameters in play compared to the prior CNN model. So we're promised greater stability, reduced ghosting, higher detail and enhanced anti-aliasing. The Transformer model is also highly scalable, so NVIDIA is predicting further improvements to quality with future training. It's also backwards compatible, meaning it should be able to be retrofitted to prior titles running DLSS 2 and higher. Let's take a look at some of these enhancements, but just to reiterate, this is only a quick look, first impressions if you like. That said, the general impression both Alex and I have from the B-roll is that despite running at the same 1080p internal resolution as the CNN performance mode, it doesn't look like it looks significantly better, and there are some clear signs that some of the long-standing issues uh, we've reported with DLSS are much improved. 
And let's start with ghosting or smearing. And this is an interesting shot. The translucent panel on the left there shows classic DLSS ghosting as there's little to no information given to the algorithm on how to reconstruct this element, which makes the transformer model to the right somewhat surprising as the ghosting is basically gone. It's the same here as we take a look at these NPCs at the table and around it. In our game reviews, we've often shown that characters in the mid to long distance exhibit smearing artifacts after some time when using DLSS. Here, matched animation shows that's gone with the transformer model. We can't synchronize the background NPCs for obvious reasons. The behavior is somewhat random, but the ghosting is even more pronounced there on the left and almost completely eliminated on the right. General stability and ray reconstruction detail levels are also much improved. Check out this sequence here as we move forwards and backwards. There's a shimmer in the mid distance that shouldn't really be there. And when we move to the transformer model again, that shimmering is much reduced and essentially a non-issue. Ray reconstruction, you can essentially look at that as an RT upscaler, if you like, a more advanced form of denoising. It was impressive when we looked at the first generation version, but we did highlight improvements that we wanted to see. And there is definite improvement here. The yellow jackets here, for example, have more detail in the reflections compared to the prior model. So look, we're scratching the surface here because we are essentially looking at two essentially very different upscalers. But based on what we're seeing, quality is improved across the board. Uh, this comparison is from the benchmark run and it caught our eye. Old DLSS has some issues with detail and uh, reconstructing straight lines in motion. Here you can see reconstruction on the door edge is much improved and the slightly wobbly lines in motion on the fluorescent strip above are properly straight on the transformer model in motion. So this is a superficial first look really. Uh, much more to talk about in the review. But moving on, let's take a look at frame generation where the 50 series Blackwell cards can tap into enhanced frame generation options. In the Cyberpunk 2077 build I went hands on with, you could select 2x, 3x or 4x frame generation. And 2x is essentially equivalent to the option available on 40 series cards. The 3x and 4x options are for 50 series only. We're gonna look at how frame rate increases with the new frame generation system. And we'll also stack up 5080 against 4080 Super. But what you're looking at here is the black market in the Petrochem Stadium, a heavy area in the game. And well, the more complex the graphics workload, the bigger the gains you'll see. The percentage differentials displayed on screen here are in the moment comparisons, but across the clip, which is about two and a half minutes in length, the combination of super resolution and frame generation uh, 2x frame generation that is, delivers a frame rate multiplier of 535%. Moving on to 3x frame gen sees that rise to 725% on average, while 3 frames predictably delivers the biggest increase of all, 913% versus native resolution rendering, over 9 times faster. And now let's switch over to the same test run, but this time the new 5080 with full multi-frame generation on DLSS performance transformer model goes up against the 4080 Super running with the older DLSS convolutional neural network model and the existing 2x frame gen. In this example, frame rate is almost doubled. There's a 91% increase. So there's a couple of additional elements we need to touch on if we're talking about multiple generated frames. Pacing and latency. Pacing is about ensuring that the new generated frames are presented in a smooth, consistent manner between each standard generated frame, and it's exceptionally tricky to do right. The Blackwell architecture features custom silicon to do the job, explaining why the new 3x and 4x frame gen options are 50 series only. So here's a look at the frame time meter, repurposed here to show overall consistency. No actual metrics on the grid here, unfortunately, as frame rates are off limit for a preview and frame times can easily be converted back. But fundamentally on this grid, we're zooming into a very granular level. The cyan line shows the consistency of the older 2x frame gen technique. Not bad actually, and frame pacing with frame generation in Cyberpunk was always pretty decent. But it's definitely spikier than the green line, which represents 4x frame generation. We're getting smoother frame times shorter frame times, 
despite two additional generated frames being added compared to the older version. Cyberpunk 2077 doesn't really have stuttering problems at the game software level, but these readouts also show that frame generation doesn't add them. And with DLSS 4 multi-frame gen, even at its 4x level, frame generation isn't just amping up the frame rates, but it's doing so in a fluid, consistent manner that beats out the current DLSS 3 2x frame gen option. Now let's talk about latency. When DLSS 3 launched, frame generation was achieved by buffering an extra frame, then calculating the intermediate one. Both of these factors add latency, which was offset to a degree by NVIDIA Reflex. Latency was my key concern with DLSS 4's new multi-frame gen feature, but I've graphed PC latency here between frame gen 2x, 3x and 4x, and as latency can't easily be reverse engineered back into frame rates, I can show those numbers. You can see the in the moment readouts in real time there plotted over the content, but the averages across a circa two and a half minute run through the black market work out like this. A 50.9 millisecond average latency with frame gen 2x rises to 55.5 milliseconds with 3x frame generation, with a 57.3 millisecond average with the full 4x frame gen option. So based on this sample then, we're looking at a 6.4 millisecond average addition to latency with frame gen 4x versus 2x in exchange for a 71% increase in frame rate, which is a pretty equitable trade, I'd say. So it seems to be that the majority of the extra latency still comes from buffering that extra frame, but adding further intermediate frames comes with a relatively minimal increase in latency. That means that the gameplay is still responsive in Cyberpunk, and unless you're super attuned to input lag, you're unlikely to tell the difference between 4x DLSS frame generation and the existing 2x option. Finally, let's summarize how the new features deploy on all of the existing RTX cards. Important stuff, but it's pretty straightforward to be honest. The new transformer model for super resolution and ray reconstruction is compatible with all RTX cards going all the way back to 20 series, though the increased workload may not provide the same level of optimal performance as the beefed up 50 series. Frame generation? Nothing changes with the existing 2X feature. That's still exclusive on 40 series and up, while the frame pacing hardware in Blackwell means that 3x and 4x frame gen is 50 series only. Okay, so look, five and a half hours with DLSS 4 on an RTX 5080. We've learned a lot. And before we move on to actual reviews, some final thoughts from me with the caveat that this is just one implementation on one game with non-final hardware drivers and software. I've shared some footage of the new DLSS performance mode using the Transformer model with Alex, and we were agreed that the quality improvement is clear to see, and the key issues we've had with DLSS, um, well, they look to have been significantly improved. Ray reconstruction is much better. Super resolution solves a lot of the remaining issues we've highlighted continuously in various game reviews over the months and years. This is the next big image quality leap, and that's exciting. Multi-frame generation, well, without discussing precise numbers, is taking one of the most demanding workloads in graphics, well, well north of 120 frames per second on the 5080, making it an experience that's a better fit for the latest range of high refresh rate displays. And remember, this is full RT overdrive here, full path tracing, so it stands to reason that multi-frame gen will push frame rates even higher on less demanding fare. And in terms of the B-roll we've used throughout this video to illustrate DLSS 4, well, just remember, it's the best we could do. We had to cap output frame rate to 120 frames per second and then slow it down to 50%, owing to the limitations of YouTube as a platform and the fact that no capture card on the market can grab every image generated by the fully unlocked experience on 5080. On another note, I'm also curious to see how DLSS 4 reacts to CPU limited games, where frame generation in its current state has proven to be a valuable tool and where frame rate uplifts have been at their highest. The evolution of graphics performance continues to outstrip advances in the CPU space, and the new 3x and 4x frame generation options in 50 series could be very, very interesting. So look, that's the first look at DLSS 4. Lots to absorb here and plenty to be excited about as we move into the review period. 
But for now, that's it. So please do like, subscribe, share if you enjoyed the video and ring the bell for notifications on when new Digital Foundry content quote unquote drops. And yeah, please do consider the DF Supporter Programme. In line with all of our other videos, a much higher quality version of this content is available for download. YouTube compression be gone. We'll be back with Blackwell for the upcoming review period, but that's all from me for now. Thanks for watching and supporting Digital Foundry.